another software product I quickly would like to introduce here because it will be useful for some courses. For example, digital signal processing is MATLAB. MATLAB or Matrix Laboratory originally is a technical computing language. It's a language specifically for people who do experiments with numerical mathematics. So what's special about MATLAB compared to other programming languages? It's a high level language, so you don't have to worry about memory management. It has a garbage collector. It has variable length data structure. It has a very simple type system. The main data type are uh, two or three dimensional uh, floating point matrices. The main numeric type is a 64-bit floating point number. So whenever you type something, even a single number is treated as a one by one matrix. So you don't really have to worry much about the type system. You can just write down mathematical expressions as you might uh, think of them. And there is a lot of very high level mathematical operators available so you can uh, multiply matrices, add matrices up. It's quite rarely necessary in MATLAB to actually write out a loop because many of the loops that you would encounter in common linear algebra operations are already available to you as part of the operators. <clears throat> MATLAB was originally a interpreted programming language. It still feels like an interpreter. Um, you don't have to go through a a uh, compiler step, but uh, recent MATLAB versions, there's actually a, a Java just-in-time uh, compiler, a JVM compiler running under the hood. MATLAB itself is not a high-performance programming language, but it uh, implements many of the mathematical operations that it offers, um, linear algebra operations like inverting a matrix or um, calculating a fast Fourier transform using highly optimized uh, Fortran or C libraries that work under the hood and that are uh, carefully tuned to the capability of the available computer architecture. Um, the syntax of MATLAB is relatively simple, maybe a little bit inspired by some elements of the basic programming language with some elements from C. It comes with a graphical uh, user environment, so it's quite easy to get into it. Um, what makes MATLAB in particular for university education use attractive is that um, it allows students to focus very much on the application algorithm without having to do a lot of the bureaucracy involved with input and output. So there are built-in visualization tools, function plotting and so on is all readily available in a single line um, there's a lot of data I.O. facility available. So for example, if you want to read an audio file, there's an audio read command. Uh, you just provide the file name and the result is available as a vector, a one by n matrix of floating point numbers. If you want to read a photo in, there's a um, image reading uh, function available and you get the same data type out, a two-dimensional array of floating point numbers, if it's a grayscale photo or a three-dimensional uh, matrix uh, with a red, green, blue layer, if it was a color image. So you don't have to bother much with getting your data in and getting your data out. And as a result, it's very popular for um, numerical experiments for any kind of rapid prototype uh, number crunching and has become quite widely used since the late 1980s as a visualization and teaching tool. Um, in contrast, what is MATLAB not? It's not a computer algebra system, so it's specifically designed to do numerical work, mostly with floating point numbers. It's There are other systems, uh, Mathematica and similar available um, for manipulating formulas, solving equations in a, in a symbolic way. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't describe MATLAB as a sort of very strong general purpose programming language as it has somewhat 
limited facilities for data structures. It lacks many of the uh, software engineering features that you find in other languages like uh, Java or C++. So I wouldn't uh, use it, for example, to teach object-oriented programming, even though in modern MATLAB there are some object-oriented programming uh, features available as well. It has some limited uh, facilities for building applications with graphical user interfaces. So if you want to have a couple of uh, a form with some entry fields and a few sliders, you can now also do this in MATLAB. MATLAB is not freely available. It's a commercial product. However, the University of Cambridge has paid for a campus license. So you are able to download MATLAB and use it uh, free of charge while you're a member of the university. Um, some competition uh, for MATLAB that I want to mention, in particular open source alternatives. If you don't want to get involved with a commercial product unnecessarily, there are now a number of quite attractive alternatives available. They fall in two categories. Um, there exist a number of projects. The most well-known of these is probably uh, GNU Octave that really set out to re-implement MATLAB, a sort of almost backwards compatible implementation of at least a subset of MATLAB. Um, there's a couple of others, Scilab and FreeMAT, but I don't really know how widely these are used. GNU Octave is quite widely used. There also exist a number of other languages that operate in the same domain, high-level interpreted or interpreter-like languages uh, with strong plotting functionality with data types, numeric high-level data types, matrices, vectors that are inspired by uh, what MATLAB can do. The first of these is the R programming language. That's a sort of open source re-implementation of an earlier language called S that was developed for statistics application at AT&T Labs. And R is really very much focused on statistical applications. It has data frame uh, data types, which are not just matrices, but you can annotate matrix rows and columns with metadata. And then there's a huge number of um, statistics, but also some signal processing uh, packages and, uh, and excellent plotting facilities available. So R is a very common workhorse of the entire trade that calls itself a data scientist at the moment. Then there's the Python programming language, which is a general purpose interpreted scripting language, not particularly fast like R, more than an order of magnitude slower than compiled languages like C or Fortran. Um, but Python originally was not designed for numerical applications, but then came along an extension to Python called NumPy that adds a library that adds to Python MATLAB-like uh, matrix and vector uh, data types and also packages up all these uh, fast linear algebra libraries such as BLAS or LAPack. Um, <clears throat> That was one package that got MATLAB into the same domain as, uh, that got Python in the same domain as MATLAB. Then someone wrote uh, matplotlib, which is a plotting library for Python that's clearly very closely inspired by the MATLAB plot command. And once the foundation of these two packages was laid, um, other people came along and there's an, a large project called SciPy that uh, implements a lot of scientific computing algorithms, all kinds of approximation systems or signal processing, digital filters and so on. Um, so that has become a quite serious, comp SciPy has become a quite serious competition for many of the MATLAB toolboxes. There's also a quite popular package called Pandas that provides many of the data analysis facilities that um, have made the, the R language quite popular. The third of the MATLAB-inspired but not uh, 
MATLAB compatible languages. The new kid on the block in a sense is Julia, the youngest of the three, came out of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology uh, starting around 2012. Um, written by people who got a little bit fed up with some aspects of MATLAB but generally liked the concept. So the Julia syntax is to some degree inspired by MATLAB in particular the, the matrix notation is uh, quite similar. Julia is a compiled programming language unlike uh, R and Python it sits in it's a front end for the LLVM compiler suite so you get you're able to write in Julia program that's practically as efficient as C, C++ Fortran code. At the same time, it has an interactive read evaluate print loop uh, more similar to uh, Python. So it can be interactively used like Python, but it compiles uh, underneath into C like code. It has a flexible type system uh, which you can either use in a dynamic fashion where you don't specify or don't care what type a variable has. You just assign a value to a variable and the vari variable is happy to take any type that you assign to it. But if you are a little bit careful with how you use the types, then the compiler is able to optimize much more and that's sort of a prerequisite um, for C-like performance. So there's a sort of dynamic and a static uh, type system programming style available in uh, Julia. Um, <clears throat> one particular feature of Julia is known as multiple dispatch where which particular incarnation of a function is chosen is based not only is dynamically based not only like an object pro oriented programming language is based on the type of the object for which you call a method where you have an object dot and then a method called for the object. Um, Julia does not use this dot notation. It uses function name parentheses and then the different arguments. And in, in contrast to other programming language, Julia can dynamically dispatch on all the arguments. That's quite useful, for example, for binary data types like uh, multiplication of two objects where which type of multiplication you want to use really depends on both the first and the second argument of the multiplication. Because Julia comes out of MIT, it also has many features that the Lisp programming language that also came out of MIT is famous for. For example, uh, Julia is quite well suited for meta programming for self modifying code. There is a uh, the the macro language of uh, Julia is the Julia language itself. So you can decide for each uh, Julia function whether it's a function that gets called at comp at runtime or whether it's a macro that gets executed at compiler time and that receives as its input the abstract syntax tree of its argument rather than the values. And there are a couple of other languages in the same space. Some worth mentioning are probably Scilua. There's the Lua language, which is a small embedded language that was originally designed to be included as a control language into other tools. And then people wrote a efficient compiler called LuaJIT. And then people wrote, added MATLAB like uh, numerics facilities. And that became SciLua, which has become popular in some corners of the machine learning world in particular. And a couple of other attempts, so the Perl programming language, sort of a slightly older competitor for Python, also has now a Perl data language. The OCaml language that you know from your first year also has a numerics extension called OWL. None of these languages um, come with a built-in graphical user environment like MATLAB does. Uh, however, there are plenty of general purpose graphical user environments available that also support all of these languages. One in particular worth mentioning is uh, Jupyter, previously known as IPython, 
because it came out of the Python world. But then when other such languages came along, it was renamed into Jupyter, which was inspired by Julia, Python and R being some of the first languages. But there are uh, several dozen other languages that it now supports. And it's a graphical user environment that runs inside a web browser with a server backend that actually runs a Python R, Julia or so on uh, language system. And it gives you a nice uh, workbook environment where you can write some code, get the results displayed, continue to further analyze your results by typing some more code. Uh, and everything is preserved. You can rerun the code so you can do an ex interactive experimental session and you can also archive an experimental, interactive experimental session quite nicely this way. So how do you get um, access to MATLAB? Um, it's readily installed in the computer laboratory, in the Interlab, on the MCS Windows machines, uh, both under MCS Windows as well as under MCS Linux. Um, there are two remote login servers that you have access to, either the university-wide one linux.ds camacac, which you can SSH into, or there is one specifically for students of the computer laboratory, uh, Linux CLDS camacac. If you are a um, master's or PhD student, then you will also find MATLAB available pre-installed on the departmental filer that's mounted on all the computer laboratory managed Linux PCs. Uh, so you don't have to install it there locally. You can just use it under user groups MATLAB. Even though if it's loaded from the filer, its startup time may be slightly slower than if you do install um, it locally. So if that's a particular concern, you're still able to install it locally. Um, as I mentioned, there is a um, campus license that allows installation on all staff or uh, not only on university owned computers, but also on staff or student owned home computers in the Linux, Mac OS, uh, Windows version. So there's a URL here with more information and this campus license uh, for the last two years has included the full suite of all around 180 um, toolboxes that MATLAB offers, domain specific extensions, basically reasonably easy to use libraries with, for example, large collection of statistics and machine learning algorithms, signal processing algorithms, um, image processing, image acquisition, bioinformatics control systems, and so on. Um, in order to install it on your own computer, you have to create a login at uk.mathworks.com with your CRSID at CAMACUC email address and then the website will verify that you have a University of Cambridge email address and then will uh, then allow you to download the software and also give you a license key. How do you get started with MATLAB? There is comprehensive built-in documentation. So you just type MATLAB on the command line. If you don't find it in uh, your desktop environment GUI, um, there is a command doc that just opens the built-in uh, manual hypertext browser. Doc command gives you the hypertext man page, the graphical man page of a particular command, for example, doc plot. Uh, there's also a text based shorter version of the manual built in. So if you just write help command, you get the plain text summary of the command, which is useful if you just quickly want to look up the most important parameters. So you can learn MATLAB by opening the doc window and clicking on MATLAB and getting started. And that gives you a little tutorial um, that gives you a brief tour of MATLAB. There are also several tutorial videos available. And there is also the full documentation, not only built into the system, but available online such that um, 
search engines uh, are able to find that as well. But I'm also going to give you a brief tour of some facilities in the next window, in the next video.